Hello, welcome back to another video. So we are going to do something a bit different today. So one of the things that I've had to work through recently was database SSL protection. And specifically, we're going to look at Postgres today. And then on a later video next week, we are going to look at connecting to that database or something like Laravel and Django to see how we do that from our application. So security is becoming a much bigger thing in the world in, in software. And we want to make sure that we're up to date and we're keeping up to the standards. And I think a big important one of that is to make sure that that our database access is, is really, really good in terms of security, that it's it's easy for the people that need to get onto the database, the applications that need to access the database to be able to, but for the rest of the world, if they're not supposed to access the database, that they're, that's just really impossible for the, them to do, or at the very least, really, really difficult. Like the people that get into these systems sometimes are very, very smart, but we at least want to make sure that we do the minimum and preferably we can, we can look at doing the maximum. So without further ranting, I think let's get a bit into it. So the first place we want to look for is I've already installed Postgres, the 10.1. This is for Ubuntu 18.04. So when you start open up, you look at this file. You can see one of the things that they actually start doing for you out of the box is they put on SSL on. So if it's not there, one of the first things that you want to do is that you want to put it in there. So we at the moment we've got three extra ones we've we added. Like the default Postgres ones, these point to like a snake or certificate, like not an actual real certificate in the sense that somebody created it for the purpose. And we added this SSL cert file, the CA file, sorry, the SSL CA file we added ourselves. So that is a certification authority file that we created that signs all the certificates that connects to the server along with the actual server certificate. So if we look at those files is that you'll see there's a CA cert file, you see there's a server.cert file and a server.key file. Also, please, please note the server.key files permissions is 600 or read write for user and then no access for either the group or for other users on that key file. So if we look at the cert file by doing open SSL and then x509 and then nca.cert and we look at the text file, you'll see like a, like a brief summary of the thing. So this one, these ones that I created, this text is us and that's just random nonsense from the actual certificate. So um, let's see. So if we do the, the server.cert and, uh, and we do a text, is that if I think you look at the, the signature the before, not after, modulus, anyway. Okay. So those are those files. So now in my root directory, so this is just a VM that I created specifically for this video and for something else. Let's just kill that for now. Um, so the reason why Elasticsearch is there to look at like... Um, open SSL and elastic search as well later on. Um, so let's see. So we've got a client cert and we've got a client key. So the client key and the client cert was also created by this, by the CA file we've got on top there or was signed. Sorry, probably better to use the right terminology was signed by that CF file that we've got up there. And if you see that, I think if it's this one, so this is a command I've tested before and just, and then we've got access to the, to the server. So one of the things that if you'll notice if I go let's say to a directory where those files aren't like my root directory and I try this one then we need a valid certificate to get onto the server. So sometimes some applications don't give you the option of providing a certificate to connect to Postgres. One of the things we still want to do is we still want to at least get those people on onto the server. So if we look at this pg hpa file.conf you see, one of the things that I did is like out of the box is that these are all host ent entries. So they look something like this, right? So, but what I did is I went added SSL to make sure that connecting with um, via over TCP, basically not using the Unisocket, using TCP, is that we always require that connection to have SSL. So one of the things that you'll see now, if I remove this client, so this, this one 
means that we are forcing we are forcing the server to validate the client certificates that we connect with and now if we set it to naught and we restart postgres and we connect let's see from it should be fine trying to connect from here we still get access to the server even though we are not but for security sake what we want to do is, is that we really if it's possible want to make sure that go back to main go back to pghp.conf what we want to make sure when connecting over tcp is that we force ssr connection so just to make sure, test it again make sure that okay the security is back on it's working in you can still get into a database so that's all good so we've now protected our postgres instance over tcp with ssl and with um, a client certificate um, certificate pair so let's see if we go back there so one of the other things that i recently found out that i want to have a look at so let's drag this i think into this window over here so you guys can see it is that one of the things that i also found now while i started doing this video was this so one of the things we also want to do is we want to change these parameters so that they're a bit more secure so and then okay so i think this is actually open ssl apparently it's going to take a long time Hopefully not that long though. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We've got this. Um, Okay, so let's see, we've got this one over here. Copy paste that. Do that. Process. And then I think the file name was dashboard.pem. So not restarting. It's probably going to complain about permissions now. Let's just see journal. Okay, so let's see how it started. Okay, and then password. So there we go. So we've done that as well. So I hope this helps you a bit more with securing your web server. And look forward to have another video where we look at connecting our applications using client certificates to our Postgres instance to make sure that we always have a secure connection to our database from our applications. And with that, goodbye.